Cars forming up at the back of the grid, and time has run out, I think, for Tom Coronel. His car still in the garage being worked on. Lauren Kazanov comes to the final row of the grid with Jab van Lagen. Ladigan is ready to start from the pit lane. Coronel is not. Red lights go on. On go five. Off they go and away we go. The BMWs will start faster. Trying to come around Alan Menu. Exler takes the lead. Portera goes by as well. But Menu holding off Sergio Hernandez and Frio and Muller and Farfus. And teammate Rob half behind him. Jörg Muller on the outside. Farfus goes through. And don't forget, when they come out of the second quarter, oh, contact! And that's Prio in the barriers, and Jörg Muller damaged as well. Muller's lost a left front tyre, Prio's got damage on the rear. Muller's out of the race, Prio continues, his excellent lead. And Portero smoking up the inside, turns around rival Hernandez. Two BMW factory drivers out in the first corner. Yellow flags wave, they've all got to stay away from that yellow line there. Engsler leads, Menu has got a chance now. Menu has got a real chance. Damaged, badly damaged, Car Portero in third, holding up far for half of the race. Farfus up to fifth, Bournemouth up to sixth. They started in eighth and ninth. Well, that's the damage that has been caused. Prio's dropping down the order. Seventh place at the moment. Dragging the ass into the car, and that was Bournemouth getting sideways. Bournemouth's in the barriers. In front of half, he's gone off. Broken suspension, and he's going to have to pull off left here at Foch. Get out of the way if he can make the car turn left. It's cramming appallingly. Engsler leads. This is Portero ahead of Farfus and half. This is third, fourth, and fifth. Engsler leads from Menu at the moment, as far as we've seen. We haven't seen him uh, continue. And Prio with damage on the back of the car. There is Jörg Muller heading into retirement. Broken left front suspension. Engsler across the line, or is it Menu that leads? It's Engsler still. Menu in second place. Third is Portero. Oh, and the safety car! Engsler blindsided around the blind corner, hits the safety car. Menu stops everybody coming in at full speed behind him. Frank Engsler is on the right hand side of the picture, so he hit it with the passenger side. Red flags will have to come out now. Sergio Hernandez with damage. The uh, damaged rear end of his car has set the bodywork alight. Boardman's car there as well at the exit of Foch. They're going to have to drag those out of the way. But the real drama, Engsler in the back of the safety car. Safety car stationary almost in the middle of the road. Engsler's team, well, here he is. Look, he's doing 185 kilometers now. The safety car doing, what, 40? Uh, I'm certainly hoping that everybody inside the safety car is OK. That was a big, big impact. Very worrying moments indeed for race director Eduardo Freitas. Jörg Muller comes in while well, he was really the first damaged car as he grinds his way in below us. He will not take part in any restarted race and the occupants of the safety car are OK. And that above all else, and I'm sure Franz Engsler will be as well, but that above all else has been our prime concern for the last few moments. Let's have a look again at the start. Engsler gets a good getaway. Menu gets inside Portero. And coming up the hill, what happens? Well, this is uh, at corner two. Prio and Muller get together, and Muller, bam, into the wall. Prio loses a bumper, Muller loses a wheel, and that was the end of Jörg's race. And all the way around lap one. First corner, second corner, third corner, fourth corner. Boardman, look here, car gets sideways. Now, was that the suspension going on him in the first place, or was it the slide and then the hit in the barriers on cold tyres that killed the suspension? Does he get a hit from behind? Well, as Hernandez is turned around by Portero, who's going to be really in trouble. Yeah, Boardman had a couple of taps from behind, broken left front, I think broken left rear, possibly as a legacy of Prio running into the back of him. Well, now the question is, with, with well... Actually, a lap had been completed by the leader. He hit the safety car on lap two. So should we have a full restart? I don't know the rules enough to be able to judge, but look at that right in the front wheel. That was a major impact for Engsler and for the safety car. Again just reiterates what the dangers are on a street circuit like this. Blind, 185 kilometer an hour corner, and a near stationary car in front of him. Massive, massive impact. Well, 
It doesn't make edifying viewing no matter how many times you see it. Here's the onboard view. Look what you see, nothing. And don't forget, Engsler is 20 metres in front of us and doing the same speed. This is greatly slowed down. That was a very frightening moment, no question for Frank Sengsler. There's no chance he's going to continue in this race, but the question is, who will? Well, they are behind the red line, waiting for further news. Clearly, that safety car is going to be doing no more work this weekend. The Chevrolet very badly damaged indeed. Its occupants, though, mercifully protected. The impact, luckily, Engsler managed to avoid running right into the back of it, but could not avoid that left front wheel well that ripped the wheel off his car as well and there is franz Sengsler. he is okay as well some bizarre things happen on street circuits that has got to be one of the most bizarre i've seen in a very long while you see Engsler trying desperately to find a way through on the left. He's breaking, 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 trying to dodge to the left as the car just narrows the gap on him. Safety car scrambled and uh, came out of the pit lane, but uh, by necessity should really have been right over on the extreme right-hand side as the driver saw it. Well, wow. So Engsler is out, no question. And that means if we restart now with the positions at the end of the last completed lap, Alamenu would lead from Felix Portero, then Augusto Farfus and Rob Huff. You can see the marshals here trying to help remove bits off Andy Prio's car. The cars are essentially, in, again, in park for May. Be careful with that. There's not much of it left, but dropping it on people isn't going to help. The crane handlers trying to clear the track as much as they can. Well, the screen's still saying that the race is suspended rather than we will have a completely fresh race. Now, if it had not completed a lap before the red flag, then I think there's no option but to restart the race. Work going on at the front of Jörg Muller's car. You can see Jörg down there in his white uh, racing overalls with a blue jacket on as well. Engsler's car, well... Uh, I'm not sure even if they get it back to the pits, there's very much they can do about it. That looked like the sort of impact that makes a lot of mess to mounting points and moves suspension around. Well, there is Portero. So where is Menu? He's been released from the front of this group. Now they're being told by race officials in which order to release the cars to go back onto a starting grid. Well, at the start, Menu's car, as expected, was slightly swamped by the BMWs. He held on inside Portero. First damage, though, between the BMW teammates. Jörg Muller on the outside gets around Farfus, but then can't get around Andy Prio. Prio's got nowhere to go. Farfus manages to avoid it from Jörg's viewpoint. Doesn't make much better viewing either for the BMW trio. Contact, race over. Or is it? Will Jörg come back out? And Boardman, bizarre, huge slide there. But we saw earlier on the run up here, look for the black Seat. Well, does he get, well, there's a big lock up from him as the two BMWs in front make contact. But did Boardman get contact from behind from Prio that broke the suspension and led to his retirement? Well, Franz Engsler, after this horrifying incident, is in the pits. Let's hear from him now. Yeah, I come to the start finish line and see the board uh, safety car and I go less from the speed but in especially in this corner you can't go totally off from the throttle otherwise you have a spin or it's too dangerous in this corner and then I see the safety car and come totally to the left this I can't understand why he did this and I have no chance to to break and and I look that I can go totally uh, uh, to the fence, but uh, no chance to, to come uh, by side on, on the safety car. Um, really, I don't understand why he go uh, in the pit exit totally to the left. It's, uh, I don't understand, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Right, it is a very difficult situation, as uh, Engsler said. He tried desperately to find a gap between the wall and the safety car, and there just was not one safety car. Does not come out quickly, and as Engsler says, moves straight into the middle of the road. And he's doing, well, according to Ivan Muller, that's 185 kilometer an hour corner. That's plenty to be trying to avoid near stationary cars. 
even if the safety car was doing as much as 80 k's, 50 miles an hour, which from those pictures I would doubt, there was still really 100 kilometers an hour, 60 mile an hour closing speed, and what, 30 meters to sort it out in, 20 perhaps from when he saw the safety car. The gap narrowed that he was going for, narrowed, 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 and as you can see, explaining to the team. Well, Tom Boardman is down below us, and uh, we saw left and uh, front and rear suspension on this car, both broken. I'm afraid Tom's weekend has gone from bad, well, from good and promising to bad to really just atrocious. Um, really very bad luck indeed for him. His first weekend out with, the, with this new car they've built up for him, and they were really looking forward to getting their teeth around it. Well, Jörg Muller, his car waiting to go. And the question is now, how are we going to restart this? We have seen them organising the queue. Alamenu is at the front of it. The marshal's there with uh, pictures clearly from the phone of the damage. Now, Kirill Adigin started, of course, on the pit lane, and so he joins on the back of the queue. But Tom Coronel's car, well, they may as well do it. You can see Tom in the, far, in the background there in his race suit watching on the TV. Pretty unedifying, and unfortunately for him, there is no. Uh, fresh race. It has not been declared null and void. It will be a restart, which means that if he does join in before they get going again, he will be at least one lap behind. And uh, even with Engsler out of the race and potentially with Portero suffering penalties, Tom Coronel may not be in any position to get any points at all for his independence uh, points battle. Teams have been allowed to attend to their cars, and some of them may need it more than others. This is going to be uh, a bit of a battle of damage limitation here. As they will swarm around the cars. Now you can only do what you would normally be able to do on the grid. They obviously won't need to refuel or anything, because the race hasn't been extended in any way. But if there is uh, damage that needs to be repaired, it'll have to be hastily repaired. Can't change tyres or anything else. Well, let's hear from Tom Coronel. He's down in the garage, and Louise Beckett has caught up with him. Tom, there's been drama on the track, but it could be to your benefit. I think there's a good possibility for me to, uh, to start the race, so uh, we're trying to get ready to, uh, to see if we can, uh, we can start, because then at least we can catch some points. Uh, the car's ready. Um, we have no clutch, but at least, uh, at least the rest is ready. Thanks. Well, he's right, there are only six independent cars, I think, going to take the restart. So even if he crawls around a couple of laps behind with no clutch and, and you know, even if he half destroys the gearbox, which he will obviously try hard not to, there is a chance of at least a couple of points. And as Andy Preo always has said, every single point is worth sweating blood for. John Waterman with Alan Menu, his uh, young, ch young charge. Yeah, all right, I'll give him that. Uh, Younger than Water, ooh, don't know. Not sure if Alan Menu is younger than John Water. I'm, I'm going to get myself into a hole I can't possibly dig out, so I'll stop digging now. Uh, whatever, Waterman Menu on the front of the queue. And uh, the closest gentleman to us with the uh, blazer and the uh, uh, beige trousers you saw on Eve Bacalan ahead of the stewards will be uh, communicating his desires uh, for the way that the race is going to be restarted to the front of the grid. Still, Jörg Muller's boys continue to try and uh, get this car fixed. And don't forget how we saw it coming in, that left front wheel, the driver's side wheel, was uh, basically almost completely sheared from the car. A little bit of tape isn't going to really do much. That's not what they're worried about. What they're worried about is renewing or reattaching or replacing the suspension links at the bottom to try and get uh, the wheel attached and the steering to work and the suspension to work so that Jörg can again rejoin and uh, possibly take some part in the race because when you see a first lap like this, there's absolutely no guarantees it's going to be nice and normal through the rest of it. Well, when they do restart, uh, we have got one completed lap. Laps to go here show 18. Now, obviously, they're not just going to say, right, you're all in a line, drop the clutch, let's go. Uh, so we will probably... Well, this is what happened to Jörg Muller, getting squeezed as Andy Prio tries to get back in line in front of him. Just a miscalculation between the two of them. Farfus survived around the outside. 
But uh, although the right-hand side of his car looks good, take a look at that left front wheel. Not turning, car not running on the suspension. Now they're trying to make sure not only is it attached, but they are using a, a wheel and uh, the levels there to try and set the correct suspension, the camber, the toe in, the toe out, to try and make sure that the thing actually handles as well as actually has all four wheels. Because uh, with the precious little runoff area here, you don't want a car that won't turn in one direction. Also, Jörg had uh, dropped right down the orders at the back of the field, of course, before coming in to the pit lane. All hands on deck at the moment. Try and make sure that the car is as close to race-worthy condition as they can possibly make. And for them, like with Tom Coronel's crew, as they're adjusting the top mounts on the uh, McPherson strut as well, the longer this delay goes on, the better. And... Uh, well, there with the tape, one of the veteran engineers from Schnitz. He's been in the team nearly as long as Charlie Lamb. Raced in the British Touring Car Championship, DTM German Touring Car Championship, European Touring Car Championship, World Touring Car Championship. As Rob Houghton, a bit of air drumming or explaining the chaos at the start. He'll be fifth in the line for the restart. Quite like the air drumming there. And Coronel's bonnet goes down. Tommy is in the car, when it goes up. Get your gloves out, remove all tools. All these things you do when you make your own car. And there is Sergio Hernandez. He's uh, walked all the long way back in, down the hill from Pont Oscar. Felix Portero got into the back of him, spun him around, and uh, the needle match between the two of them seems to continue. And Portero, I have to say, is probably going to be pretty strenuously penalised after race one, and ditto after race two. And there's a slight problem here, is that if he'd been penalised after race one, he would not have been in the position, as far as Hernandez is concerned, to punt him off in race two. And uh, maybe it is something that uh, the championship needs to be looking at, not keeping all decisions for both races until after they've been run because the driver who you might otherwise, if it was a single race on a weekend, have excluded uh, or black flagged out of the race, can still take part in race two quite often and possibly also affect the results, the points, and the way that the championship works there. So again, awful lot for the stewards to do this weekend. And certainly I know that absolutely uppermost in race director Eduardo Freitas' mind will be what happened here. The penalty line on the white, the blend line for the race cars is to stop them doing exactly this at race speed. And yet the safety car came straight out in front. Clearly he was not aware that the leader was as close to him. He was thinking he might have another 20 or 30 seconds to get down to corner two to pick them up as they finish their braking.